In the world of competitive Pokemon, obviously there are some of the lovable monsters that get banned for one reason or another. And while I've already taken a look at them, why not discuss some of the individual items and moves that were also not allowed at certain points in time throughout VGC history. Welcome to another Gatorx compilation and get ready to clear out your berry pocket because here we go. Pokemon may not hold the item Soul Dew. 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 So, what is Soul Dew? One of the only banned items in Pokemon, Soul Dew first appeared in Generation 3. This is the signature item of Latios and Latias. So, banned items, what's the deal with that? When it comes to competitive Pokemon, there are a few rules set in place to keep things fair. These typically apply to official Pokemon VGC tournaments, online competitions, and even in-game battle facilities. While these restrictions may vary from time to time, they're usually placed on box legendaries and mythical Pokemon, along with some other legendary Pokemon as well as Chadot sometimes. That criminal bird has tormented trainers for too long, he must be stopped. Anyway, another restriction, often placed on teams, is that they may not contain a Pokemon holding the item Soldu. But why is that? Well, of course it's to balance things out. Soldu's effect is that when it's held by either Latios or Latios, it increases special attack and special defense by 1.5 times, and that's pretty good. Latios and Latios already have some impressive stats, and an item like this that gives buffs to two of those stats and can only be used by these Pokemon specifically seems a bit unfair. Soul Dew has appeared in every Pokemon game since then, even appearing alongside the Mega Stones for Latios and Latios in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, maintaining the same effect. That is until Generation 7 where it received a significant nerf. The new effect still only applies to Latios and Latios, but now only increases the power of Psychic and Dragon-type moves by 20%. In my opinion, this was the right choice, but this made it the inferior item compared to using the Mega Stones or even alternate strategies. Of course, with Generation 8 not containing Mega Evolutions, it's become a little more of a viable option again. And with this nerf to its ability, Soul Dew is no longer a banned item in battles. Soul Dew also appeared as a very important part of the movie Pokemon Heroes which features Latios and Latios, among other things. And in the movie, the Soul Dew is even more overpowered, being the ultimate source of basically everything in Ultomare. It's been a while since I've seen this movie. Soul Dew also appeared as an item in the trading card game, but not for us here in the Unova region. It was released in the Theater vs. pack, which was released only in Japan, alongside the Pokemon Heroes movie. The Soul Dew card itself allows you to search your deck for any Pokemon with Ultomare in its name and place it on your bench, and also included in the Theater vs. pack were all of the Ultimare Pokemon, which are featured in the movie. Latios, Latias, Zatu, Pidgeotto, Kabutops, and Aerodactyl. There are also other Pokemon belonging to characters from the movie, most notably the villains, Oakley and Annie. I started out looking into the item Soul Dew, but I've stumbled across a really good TCG product connecting to a beloved Pokemon movie. Unfortunately, this was never released outside of Japan, because it was one of the many products Wizards of the Coast chose not to translate because they deemed it inappropriate to competitive play. But even if it were released in modern times, I doubt we'd receive an English official release. Mostly because we never see any translations of the really interesting promo cards released in Japan. But the Soul Dew item is still kicking, in its less powerful state. You can even obtain it in Sword and Shield, but it no longer holds the same reputation. A mysterious MacGuffin with tremendous power that had to be banned in certain parts of the game. But it's still one of the most interesting in Pokemon's history. And so, that is the Soul Dew. Pokemon's banned item. Out of all the banned Pokemon, moves, and items, the most enigmatic is, unsurprisingly, the Enigma Berry. So, what's the deal with it? The Ligma Berry was often prohibited from competitive play during Pokemon's third generation. It's funny looking back and seeing it next to the Soul Dew on a list of restricted items. And while the story behind it isn't as serious, it is rather curious. In Generation 3, the Enigma Berry was unobtainable through normal gameplay, and was instead something of a placeholder item alongside the E-Reader Berries. The Nintendo E-Reader was a device that connected to the Game Boy Advance and could scan cards for various games. This is a whole rabbit hole on its own that I would love to talk about someday when I actually obtain my own e-reader and the much more expensive cards, but the basic thing for now is that Pokemon had e-reader functionality. Specifically, there were these berry cards that, when scanned, allowed you to receive the corresponding berry in the game. 
So the Enigma Berry itself wasn't a card, it was a placeholder along the same lines as this. At least that's what I can figure out. We'll see more of a connection as we go into the next generation. I do find it pretty interesting that an item unobtainable through normal gameplay was actually acknowledged by the Pokemon Company, to the point that it was banned from competitive play for that reason. It didn't even have an actual effect in Generation 3, because it wasn't meant to. Not really an exciting story though, but it was still given a unique sprite being a black berry with question marks all around it. Basically the berry version of the Pokemon placeholder sprites from that same generation. Now that's pretty clever. Moving into Generation 4, it was made into an actual berry and no longer banned from competitive play. Attempting to transfer e-reader berries through the PAL Park would just cause them to turn into Enigma berries. And so that's where the connection between them all comes in. It even has an effect now, which is that when it's held, it restores one-fourth of the user's HP after they're hit with a super effective move. That's it? I mean, there are worse berries, but there are also better ones. The Citrus Berry still outclasses just about every other HP recovery berry. Well, at least it's been promoted from, well, nothing. Though it was still rare and was mostly a held item of distribution Pokemon, which actually gives it an odd connection to Darkrai. Now, one of the first Darkrai distribution events is one that I actually attended back in the day. To celebrate the release of the Rise of Darkrai movie, a Darkrai holding an Enigma Berry was distributed. It also knew Roar of Time and Spatial Rend, the signature moves of Palkia and Dialga. It is really weird that a Darkrai would know these moves, but I'm guessing it's most meant as a reference to the fact that Palkia and Dialga appear in the movie, similar to a Victini that was distributed during Black and White. But what's neat is that the same Darkrai was adapted into a trading card that was a promo for Japanese theatrical releases, and was included in DVDs for the European release. It knows both signature moves and is even holding an Enigma Berry. Held items were something pretty neat that they did in Generation 4 in the TCG, and so it's cool to see it here. And pretty much every future Dark Ride distributed from events would be holding the same item. And I'm not really seeing too much of a solid connection. It could be that Dark Ride is a mysterious Pokemon in both the game appearances and movie debut. And so it's holding a mysterious berry. It could be that they both have a similar color scheme because, you know, that just looks cool. Maybe along with theories of the Dream World being an actual separate dimension, Dark Ride could have actually access the dream world and brought the enigma berry from there. Or maybe they just needed some way to have this berry available and Darkrai had no real signature item to hold so they just give him the enigma berry. And that brings the strange Darkrai connection chapter to a close. Who wants a enigma berry? He had three in the morning. Oh boy, 3 a.m. <laughs> So apparently, in Generation 6, you could use it as an ingredient along with a Roselli Berry to make an ultra-rare soda at the Lumios Juice Shop? I had no idea there was a juice shop in Lumios. I was too busy at the restaurants. But yeah, this was a place where you could get drinks to increase Pokemon's EVs, friendship, and level. And so with the Enigma Berry basically being the rarest berry in the game at the time, I guess it made some sense to have it as the ingredient for one of the rare items on this crafting list. But ever since then, the Enigma Berry has just kind of faded into obscurity. Because now, it's easily available in Sword and Shield's Crown Tundra. But it is really funny to see the journey this item has taken throughout the year years and a berry of all items. It's still just a mediocre HP berry that's a little more obtainable than before, but it hits a bunch of boxes. Banned, unobtainable, obscure, rare, and mysterious. And so that has been the story of- after taking a look at the handful of Pokemon and items that have been banned from official competitive play at various times for one reason or another, the obvious next step is to discuss some of the moves that were also prohibited from being used. I figured I might as well just bundle them all together in one video, so first of all, let me drop the 411 on Skydrop. Skydrop is a move introduced in Generation 5. It's a two-turn move where the user carries a target into the sky on turn 1 and drops them down, dealing damage on turn 2. Between the pickup and the drop, both the user and the target are semi-invulnerable. I honestly really love this move because even though it's a bit similar to Fly or Bounce, it feels very unique with its execution. With Pokemon existing how they are, it just makes sense for this to be a move. It really isn't a signature move as a good group of Pokemon can learn it, but it's often associated with Braviary. As this was a Pokemon introduced in the same generation and is the same type as a move. It's weird to see that over the years Braviary has remained a pretty relevant Pokemon, being used by Cynthia in black and white and now receiving an amazing regional variant in Legends Arceus. Look, it can even use Skydrop on its own trainer!
Skydrop also interacts with some other moves and mechanics in interesting ways. Of course, like Fly, it doesn't grant full immunity to moves like Smackdown, Thunder, Precipice Blades, and so on. But its most notable interaction is with the move Gravity. This is a psychic move that grounds all Flying-type and Levitating Pokémon for 5 turns, making them vulnerable to Ground-type moves. As you would expect, this also works on Pokémon in the air with Skydrop. But in Generation 5, it actually caused a glitch where the target taken into the air with Skydrop will be stuck when gravity activates, while the original user will be free to attack. Yo, it's GatorX, and it's time for a throwback as we have a live battle, or at least it's going to be a live demonstration of the Skydrop glitch. You can actually do this in-game without having to battle anybody online, because there are a few trainers who will double battle. So here I've got Tornadus and Sigilyph, just some easy Pokemon that are able to learn the moves that we're going to need for this glitch. So, Tornadus being the fastest is going to use Skydrop on Simiseer here, so that's going to bring them both into the sky with the invulnerability. Simapore is going to move here, uh, but now we get onto Sigilyph that uses gravity, and that will bring both Tornadus and the Simiseer back down to the ground. And at this point, everybody's already moved, and Simiseer should be stuck. Simiseer shouldn't be able to do anything. So going on to the next turn, we're going to attack with Tornadus and Sigilyph. And uh, Tornadus is going to be able to go first, having the highest speed. So here's Tornadus' move with Air Slash. And then after that, we're going to get Simapore's move, which it's actually going to use Scald, and uh, it's actually pretty crazy because it gets the burn. So it's been so long since I've commentated a battle live. <laughs> I used to do content like this, but not so much anymore. But now this should be where Simiseer moves, except it doesn't, and that allows Sigilyph to move. So as you can see, Simiseer didn't attack at all. It's the end of the turn, we're getting the burn damage with Tornadus, and now this will allow me to basically just sweep up the battle here. Again, this is just an NPC, they're nothing special. That's basically the battle, that's how the glitch works in action and uh, in real life. Hopefully this worked out, uh, but let's get back to uh, the rest of the video. Because of this glitch, the move Skydrop was banned from online official competitive play during Generation 5. In later games, the move was fixed and everything was fine from there. It's just so crazy to see that this actually happened. The idea of just carrying a Pokemon out of existence is hilarious to me. The next move is Dark Void. If you've been playing Pokemon recently as we trudge back through the Sinnoh region, you might recognize Dark Void as Darkrai's signature move. This move has an 80% chance of putting the target to sleep, and in double battles it can be used on both of the opponent's Pokemon at the same time. This is extremely powerful because it makes both the opposing Pokemon sitting ducks while you get to do whatever you want. But since Darkrai is a mythical Pokemon, it's not allowed in official competitive play anyway, so there's nothing to worry about, right? Well, there is this one Pokemon, one that could potentially harness this dark power for its own and cause nightmares for players around the world. It's this heckin' doggo right here. Smeargle is a great Pokemon, it's from Gold and Silver and it has such a fun gimmick. Smeargle only learns one move every 10 levels, Sketch. This allows it to permanently copy any move that it sees being used in battle, so Smeargle's potential moveset is pretty much limitless. And this was a perfect loophole to take advantage of a powerful, exclusive move. Smeargle wasn't banned from tournaments because it wasn't a mythical Pokemon, and its stats were just decent enough, so just give it Dark Void and some other good moves, and there you go, you're all set. It really didn't even matter if Smeargle wasn't particularly powerful, as long as it could resolve a Dark Void, you were already in a good position. Smeargle is the new Dark Lord. And because of this, the move itself was banned from being used in official tournaments. And on top of that, in Generation 7, a few changes were made to Dark Void, just to absolutely make sure this wouldn't happen. Instead of an 80% chance to put to sleep, it was changed to a 50% chance. And on top of that, Dark Void could only be used by Darkrai. It could still be sketched with Smeargle, but if selected in battle by a Pokemon other than Darkrai, the move would fail. The same goes for other copying moves like Gimmick, Assist, and so on. And so the Dark Lord was restrained for the good of humanity. It's actually pretty crazy that in Pokemon's history of official tournaments, really only two moves had to be banned. One for a glitch that was eventually fixed, and the other because apparently that's not how you were supposed to play the game. However, there is one more interesting story that I think we could count. Back during Generation 7 in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, the moves Curse, Forest Curse, Power Trick, and String Shot were banned from VGC. This is because for some reason, when any of these moves were used during the live competition mode, they would cause the game to crash. Why exactly? Well, who knows. 
probably just some weird oversight with how the games were made or how the battle system was built. Honestly, pretty typical for Pokemon, but it is pretty interesting. Worth a thinking emoji or even a laughing while crying emoji, because something as simple as Caterpie using String Shot could crash the game. None of these moves were really good anyway, so the likelihood of them being used during an official competition were pretty low. But you can never be too safe. These aren't as notable because they're pretty insignificant and don't have a cool story behind them, but they do count as banned moves nonetheless. And there you have it, every move banned from official competitive Pokemon. Not a long list, but definitely a cool little story to tell at your next gathering, whenever that is. Like I mentioned, for as long as Pokemon has been around and for as, let's say, volatile the games can be at times, I'm surprised with how few Pokemon moves or items really became a problem that had to be immediately addressed with restrictions rather than mechanical changes or nerfs in the next game. Of course, this excludes legendary and mythical Pokemon which are prohibited for their power and or exclusivity. But of course, that's just the video games. The card game is where things get really crazy. TCG players are just lucky they've never had to deal with a Dark Lord Smeargle. He's still hidden deep in the catacombs, bound by blessed chains. We can never be too safe. So those have been some of the weird and banned items and moves in competitive Pokemon history. Technically, we can include leftovers, but that was more so bundled in with the Wobbuffet situation. I think with how Pokemon tends to handle moves from one generation to the next, we're less likely to see things like this happen. I mean, as of Sword and Shield, they've just been deleting moves left and right. Though I would never count out the possibility of future glitches. So let me know what you think of all these weird little cases of moves and items. I think the most significant of these was Skydrop and Dark Void, but hey, at least the String Shot story was pretty funny. And with all that, thank you to every channel member for your continued support, especially the great Gators. Cheeseburger Lasers, Justin R, Cosmo Zero, Lil Swiss, Meme Supreme, Mochizuki Yoru, Nomad Nobi, Phantom, Quago, Taijirai, Volity, and Pastel Blood. If you would like to support, get your name shout out out here as well as access to emotes for comments, live streams, and sometimes early videos like this one hopefully was, you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter as well for more memes. Anyway, this is GatorX, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Epic Battle. New amazing Pokemon and good old Ash. Cartoon Network presents the U.S. premiere of The Rise of Darkrai. Sunday, February 24th at 7 p.m. Can music soothe the savage beast? Only on Cartoon Network.